works. <laughs> That's uh, kind of cool. Hi, I'm Carl and thanks for checking out my video to my electric bike project that I'm naming Turtle. I live about 15 miles from the nearest town where the post office, gas station, and civilized people live. In April, I sold my truck, leaving a broken down motorcycle and a couple of bicycles. What you're about to see is my attempt at building an off-grid DIY survival quadricycle, a pedal-powered microcar with electric solar assist. I did a little research, but my way is most likely not the best way to do this. Once a week, I ride a bicycle into town to check mail and packages. I like bike riding, so I'm kind of looking forward to trying this out. That's the plan, anyway. Stay tuned and be sure to subscribe if you're interested. Mail call. All right, it's the 15th of May. This, I believe, is the motor I've been waiting for. Yep. Not as well packaged as you'd hope, but okay. The sad explosion of styrofoam. Holy crap, that's bigger than it looks in the picture. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think, yeah, it's a little terminal block so you can make the connections. And that's the controller. So, this is the brushless motor. There we go. I was curious what kind of force it was going to take to turn this. It's got a definite friction when it's sitting still. I guess the question is, if it's engaged to the wheel, will it coast or is it going to really cause you drag? This is a 750 watt motor and it came packaged with the controller. Man, that's got really short leads, but this one's got pretty long leads, so I guess that evens up. So you've got three terminals for the three phases of the motor, or whatever you call it. And then on this end, let's see, blue, green, yellow, blue, green, yellow. So these will go together with those. And then this is where your battery connects. <laughs> Jeez, you'd think there'd be some kind of instructions with this. Wow. 48 volts, 30 amps, 750 watts. Yeah, the idea of this is that you can connect your three motors to each other and then the two batteries and have one place at the connector. A little bit underwhelmed. I mean, it's a generic motor that, you know, I guess you're assuming you're gonna know how to hook it up, but you would expect a little bit of information. Like all these leads, where do they go to? All right, you're gonna have, there's gonna be brake connections, throttle connections. So when you hit the brakes, it'll disengage the motor. And they're all like specific connectors. Okay, so this one will be easy. Cause that one matches the one we got here. But the rest of them, right, may or may not have connections that I have. So I'll have to probably just make my own connectors. Okay, yeah, there is no instructions. Funny as that. Little tiny controller, great big freaking motor. <laughs> wow. Okay, awesome. Okay, battery pack is putting out 50 volts, just 48 plus a little bonus, basically. With this switch turned off, like it is, I should be able to hook this up to here. So I think what I want to do, spend a minute with the phone, to see if I can understand the pictures that I've found on the internet of how to hook these things up. And I think I, I'm basically at a point where, with a couple more connections, I can test the motor at least, so. That's where we're at. So I've got a stable 48 volt battery. Stable in that it's not currently thermonuclear. And it's putting out power at the leads. 
this will put power into the system when I turn the switch on so that I've got this is a breaker switch so if things go really stupid this is a 30 amp breaker um, which is what the power supply is rated at so we should be okay there this thick black wire is what goes to the motor which has the three main power leads to a three phase brushless motor basically and then the speed controller changes these two big black wires coming in to come out the three phase and then there's also this sensor here or this wire which is a sensor in the motor this is my throttle it's a, like a, a motorcycle twist grip and from what I understood from looking at some of the instructions I was able to find is most of these aren't necessary to make the motor actually run so for instance there's uh, switches for brakes that I can hook up later the connections like for instance this red wire I think is my key switch so if I jumper it to the red here it'll turn it on for now Okay, so there's a five, there's three wires that go to the motor for the main power, and then there's a five wire connector. So that's all in this black wire right here. So we can ignore that. All right. So what I figured, I just grabbed a handful of uh, clothespins off the line, and when I have identified something, if I don't need it, I'll put a clothespin on it so I can ignore it. Okay. I'm gonna say this is a pedal assist sensor. Uh, the idea is you can start pedaling. And then the sensor, uh, the bike will say, oh, okay, you need some help, All right? So when you start pedaling, the bike kicks in. When you stop pedaling, the bike stops running the motor, which is kind of clever, All right? So if you aren't like, if you just want to go for a ride and you don't want to think about the electric motor, you could set that up, tell it how much assist to give you, and it just does it and you're off and running okay so I think because that's the only three pin that I've seen we'll say that's the pedal assist and then I can ignore it we are pretty sure about the throttle one and here's the thing this is not a kit this is I bought the motor the motor came with the controller and that's it then I went out and I bought a throttle and I bought some brake handles the brake handles have a switch in them that when you touch the brakes, it should send, it's kind of like your car when you're on cruise control. If you touch the brake, the cruise control turns off. All right, if I can figure out which one. So this is gonna be kind of trial and error, I think, is how this is gonna turn out. Yeah, that's the Hall effect sensor. So at least that's common, it seems to be. All right, so that's kind of how it starts is find the ones that, I guess that was the question is, is there any rhyme or reason Okay, and then they kind of changed it a few times. Blue and black for brakes. Now this is actually from the seller. So I just got a series of, it's one picture, but I took a bunch of close-ups of it. So here it shows a red wire that they went red to purple, back to red again. All right, so that's kind of what I was thinking is if I take this one and jump it over to here, that'll be how I turn it on. I don't think there's any indicator that's going to tell me that, yeah, it's working or not. But they've got half of them not hooked up to anything. Yeah, and their picture, their Hall Effect sensor is right underneath the other half of the of this thing. You know, it's like almost hidden. I don't know what they are, but apparently they aren't needed. So I'll just clip them and put them out of the way. Now I'm going to see if I can find the gray. There's a the white one. That doesn't appear to be needed. motor is connected to the bench with a clamp so hopefully that'll work everything else has sparked so far right? okay switch is off let's turn it on nothing okay switch off let's just hook this up to the switched side of the switch I guess Switch on. Now, it would 
be nice if if, it, if you when you turned it on if something would beep or you know like on drones it'll do a little do 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 right just kind of a confirmation maybe I'll put something on it okay we're showing no voltage and then when I turn this on okay 50.4 I just want to see how smooth it is, if I can get a slow start. You got 20, 30 degrees of dead zone on here. Yeah, you got pretty good control. So it's 49 volts, so it's not losing very much power. Now the obvious thing that we want to try is <laughs> how much power does it actually have? And i got to figure out how to do that one-handed. So of course you've got to stick your hand into the sprocket. That doesn't sound at all retarded, does it? Yeah. Guys will understand. So what I've got is the throttle is right here, and it's just kind of clamped onto the bench so I can hold onto it with one hand. If it goes wrong, just let go. And it's going to turn towards me, right? It's got some torque. I'm still showing 49.8 volts, so. Bare hands, I can't stop it. That's, you know, you would hope not. It's a horsepower. Shouldn't be able to stop it, but still gratifying. I probably, if you got a single wire by itself, it's probably assuming the other wire is grounded. So let's just ground that. Looks like it's got a signal, but not very much, like millivolts. But it's got something. Ah! It does get power when the throttle is on. Three volts, eleven volts, twenty three and a half. Okay, so purple is speed sensitive. That could be for a speedometer. I'm thinking if I can hold the throttle open. Test it first. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Make sure it's centered first. Turn it on, open the throttle, and then I'll just reach in and short that out. It should stop the motor. Okay, new clip. We're trying to figure out the brake switch on here. So I'm going to turn it on. Check this to make sure it works. Okay. So the trick is going to be carefully open the throttle and then clamp it on okay now I'm going to take the red black and short it and see if it stops or not it's something appropriate for the, we'll just stick a jumper in there and arc or kind of short the two sides that was beeping uh, might have been this one. Don't beep at me. Uh, 
That's it. So uh, if I can short these two, it'll stop it. As soon as you let go. Okay, so red and black can work for a brake switch, or orange and black. Orange and black brake. The other one. Okay, gray and black. Let's do it the same way. Okay, that's interesting. They just completely stopped it. That may not be good. <laughs> Let's reset the throttle. Might be a kill switch. Or I just killed it, one or the other. Okay, let's just try that again and see if it does the same thing. two sets of everything because I'll probably break something here. Okay. Gray black, we'll just try that again and see what happens. Yeah, that just completely shuts it down. Okay, so I'm not sure what that did, but it killed it. The red bullet is a power switch. Basically, we're set. I'm pretty sure the other three wire is a PAS. If I don't, I guess at this point, if I don't need it to work, that's fine. All right. So let's un unmonkey this. Clamp fell off. Mission accomplished, I guess. We proved that it works. I did manage to make my first prototype of a battery pack. Even after sparks and smoke, it still works. Kind of frightening. What I don't have right now is a way to charge it safely. So I'm not quite at the point of doing any practical real testing yet, but I don't think I've got any shots of this thing working. Kind of clutch together, but this is the first time I've had motor and wheel and chain drive all together. A chain is, you know, typically brand new and kind of waxy, greasy. You know, so it gets on everything. This is one frightening battery pack that I rigged up from some existing parts and then some practically baling wire for anybody that knows what that is. It's not, but that's what it feels like. We've got a master switch that is off. Yep. Okay. So we can hook this up. Nothing arcing good. Yep. Now this isn't clamped very well yet. Oh man, that's got torque like crazy. Yeah, that's trying to move. That should easily move me. That was my first concern. Okay, 
Okay, that's wide open. I think my battery's dead. Let's take a look real quick before I unhook everything. Minus to here. 43. I cut off at 43. basically it. Okay, so now I know a couple things that I didn't know before. I'm just finally getting around to cobbling this together and part of it, I'm probably scared of it a little bit. Not so much the motor, but putting the battery packs together, I've never done anything at, at that level of voltage. It runs on 48 volts. And lithium batteries have uh, are famous for exploding and stuff like that. So I'm trying to be kind of careful with it, but at the same time I mean, you, you should be careful, but at the same time, you have to get it done. And until I get this thing put together, I mean, I can't do very much small scale. I have to scale it up to be useful. So like, for instance, that battery pack was kind of clutched together, uh, about as simple as I could make it. It's a whole complete mix of mechanical and like electrical and fabrication and engineering and inventing all thrown into one which is wonderful you know on the on the simple side of it i'm excited but on the same time it's kind of like ah. <laughs> so many things that can go wrong but my goal for today was to at least get the motor to turn a wheel and i was hoping to get this mounted onto some kind of a contraption of a cart that i could sit on and ride down the driveway and before I could do that, I, I realized I had never even opened the chain. I had no idea how long the chain was. Um, the box, I, I, you know, it's like some of this, I, I bought it random because you had to have a starting point. You don't know if it's right. It's probably not right. It, it kind of like, okay, it backtracks. So you got the motor is 750 watts. I'm like, I've seen cargo bikes that have a 750 watt motor. That is one horsepower. Okay. Um, so I'm like, okay, that's a starting point. This was listed as a go-kart or mini bike and it came with this sprocket. So I'm like, okay, that's a starting point. So I'm like, okay, what is this sprocket? So I found the spec on the sprocket. It's a, where's the box? So, you know, the motor said it came with a sprocket. It's a 420 sprocket. Uh, for reference, my motorcycle outside is a 520 sprocket, so this is smaller than that. How long of a chain do I need? I don't know. I have no idea. So I just went on eBay and I typed in 420 chain. This one came back. Uh, it's 108 links. That's good for a mini bike. I'm like, okay, that's great. If I cut half of it off and buy another master link, that's fine. You know, I could have that. You know, that would be, you know, that might happen, you know. But I needed a starting point, and then the sprocket that I have attached to this wheel is a 41 tooth sprocket, and I don't remember what that is, but it's geared down pretty good. We don't need to go fast, we need to get up the hill. That's the biggest thing. In the beginning, unless you are an engineer, and I am not, you don't know where to start. Alright, I'll just say it like that. So you're like, okay, let's pick one. You know, So I'm like, okay, I get this motor, it was about $107, $110, something like that. 750 watts is approximately one horsepower 48 volts typically on electric motors the more volts the more power and torque you have uh, a 12 volt motor wouldn't be very good lithium is the way to go so i did some looking on internet and found places that sell surplus batteries because a proper long-range lithium battery could be really expensive so I thought, well, let me make one of my own. What I want to be able to do, this is going to be used, you know, like if I can turn this into a electric bicycle, electric tr uh, trike, cargo bike, go-kart, mobility scooter, I've got about seven or eight different ideas, which is why this is so slow getting started. Every time I think I know what I want, I change my mind. Okay, that's never good. But what I realized 
with this motor a battery pack and the controlling the motor controller the twist grip you know a few things like that I could make this be about 10 different things if I wanted to all right I need to go check my mail about once a week mail is about 15 miles away if I can set myself up with a bicycle that I can pedal and use this for an assist because it takes me about an hour and a half to go each way to go get my mail so an hour and a half there hour and a half back so I guess this is kind of how it starts and I've been trying to figure out the safe way to get started or you know part of it I'm scared to make a mistake but I'm finally you know like you know I just got to do something so I thought well I figured out how to attach the sprocket that I bought to the Harbor Freight wheels now that's not the best solution but it works okay it, it has shown me a couple things that I wasn't sure about before this motor when it stopped it's got a lot of holding force but then it does start rolling again So it's practically a parking brake, you know, but then it will start moving. So this was the second question. Am I going to be able to coast this thing? If I get to the top of the hill, get it going, let off the throttle, is it going to coast or is it going to need me to have enough battery power to keep it going? Okay. I really couldn't tell because just on the, on the, on the uh, sprocket itself, it was really hard to turn. If, if, if it didn't freewheel, and it does feel like it's still got a lot of resistance, so then I'm thinking, all right, if I'm also pedaling this thing, if this thing doesn't freewheel, it's dead weight. It's, it's causing me more work than it might be worth. Because I'm, I only need this just to go get mail once in a while. Another part of the equation here, if I made a little like a garden tractor slash go-kart slash mobility scooter, okay, if I can make this kind of modular, so that's what I'm looking at is, the, but if I can make one module that the motor sits on and then the axle could be on a kind of a module what I'm thinking then, if I can build a chassis for a little tractor, and I'm talking, you know, the size of a small lawnmower tractor, not, you know, a farm tractor. Well, if I got to go get a wheelbarrow full of gravel that's on the other end of the property, and I've been doing that, I grab my wheelbarrow and I go walking across the property, find some sand somewhere or some gravel or some rocks, shovel it in, walk all the way back, dump it out, do that until I get too tired to do it. When it's 100 degrees, that's about one trip in the morning before it gets too hot. All right. But if I could sit down, I don't mind the shoveling, but the long walk, you know, it gets, after a while, you get tired. Okay. So if I can make this into a little scooter that I could pull a wagon, I've got eight of these wheels, so I can make a scooter that had four of these wheels. Two of the wheels are on the wheelbarrow now, but I've got two more. I've also got four 20-inch wheels. That would make a really nice little cart, or two carts. Um, if I could make two carts out of all the pieces I've got and hook one cart to the next and then have both carts pulled by the little tractor, right? Something like that. Um, another idea a one horsepower motor, depending on if I can get into the right speed range, this might be a good tool motor for maybe the drill press or uh, like a wood turning lathe or, or um, a belt sander, you know, something like that, right? So you know, it's not very fast, but if I ran it through a couple gear changes, you know, I could put uh, sprockets or um, belt pulleys on here like for instance on your drill press you've got what three or four belt pulleys and three or four on the other side and then it's just a matter of choosing what you want which one you want so i could look at something like that i'm like all right 
if I go get mail once a week, that gives me six other days that this would just be sitting here not doing anything. Okay. So if I can use it for something else also, right? The other side of that is the battery pack itself. Those lithium batteries have really good energy density. So if I can build up my battery packs as, for instance, if I made 12 volt packs, put four of them in series would be 48 volts. When I'm not using it on my scooter, I could take those 12 volt batteries, hook them up in parallel, hook them up to my solar system, and then they become part of my power storage and also uh, they can be getting recharged out there. So this is kind of why it's taking so long to get started because I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, I want to do this the best way, but if I would have just thrown these parts together on a bicycle, well, that was the other problem. This ended up being a lot bigger than I realized it was. I thought it was about half of this size. Physically, it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Now, I'm sure it matches the dimensions on the website. I just looked at it and thought I knew how big it was. And I was way off. So I, I really can't practically mount this on the bicycle as easily as I thought I was going to. So that got me thinking. It's like, well, long term, I like the idea of something like a recumbent trike. This would work really good for that because you have a little more room to work with it. So what I'm going to do probably the next day I get a chance, maybe tomorrow, we'll see how it goes. Build a little cart that I can sit on and get this thing moving. And, you know, then I can start testing. It's like, all right, does it get me to the end of the driveway and back before the battery is dead? If I go down to the gate of the property, that's a quarter mile each way. All right, so that gives me a pretty good start. If I can get there and back, that gives me half a mile. If I can't get that far, then I, I know I probably don't have enough batteries. Yeah. The, the promising thing is the batteries do work. The motor does work. The speed controller does work. The throttle does work. Chain looks good. I've got a chain and two sprockets that work together. Now it's just a matter of making something. Much more to come.